Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I decided to talk about one of many issues that affect the black community, specifically young black boys, and that's youth violence. Gangs and youth violence require an understanding of the factors contributing to its existence. The rise in youth violence has gained a considerable amount of attention in the media due to its destructive impact on those involved and I think it's important to assess the root causes when discussing black boys and youth violence. The issue surrounding black boys, gangs and youth violence in the UK, specifically in London, is a complex one that has been the subject of debate for many years, but yet no notable changes has come from it. It's also important to note that no, not all black boys are involved in youth gangs and violence, obviously. However, statistics show that they are disproportionately represented in gang activity, specifically in London. Black girls can also be involved with gangs and youth violence, but from what I've seen, it's typically under the influence of male gang members, for example, honey trap killings. A honey trap killing involves individuals being lured into a romantic or sexual relationship by someone with the intentions of causing harm or even death, with the most famous case being the brutal murder of Shakilas Townsend, who was a 16 year old boy from London who tragically lost his life as a result of a honey trap killing. In July 2008, Shakilas Townsend was lured into a housing estate in Thornton Heath, South London, by his ex girlfriend Samantha Joseph and her boyfriend Danny McLean. Unbeknownst to Shakilas, Samantha had orchestrated a plan with Danny and a group of other individuals to attack him as an act of revenge. The story of Shakilas Townsend was the subject of a BBC3 drama called My Murder starring John Boyega playing Shakilas. I remember when this came out when I was in year 8, but even then I didn't truly realise the true significance of knife crime until now that I'm older. Research has shown that poverty, unemployment and poor educational outcomes and a lack of role models are all risk factors that are conducive to young black boys joining gangs. Discrimination and racism can also contribute to young black boys feeling excluded and alienated from society which then may lead them down a path of criminal activity in order to seek a sense of belonging and reassurance. Poverty often leads to limited access to necessities and opportunities such as housing or unemployment. Joining a gang or illegally obtaining money to them provides an easy sense of financial stability. Moreover, poverty can also contribute to a sense of social exclusion where black boys feel disconnected due to additional challenges that they may face as black boys. On November the 27th, 2000, Damlela Taylor was walking home from a local library in Peckham, South London, when he was attacked by a group of teenagers who were known for their involvement in criminal activities. Damlela suffered a stab wound to his thigh, severing an artery. Despite efforts to save his life, he tragically bled to death shortly after the attack. The tragic murder of Damlila Taylor shocked the nation and sparked outrage. The case brought attention to the issue of youth violence in the UK. Damilula's murder highlighted the vulnerability of young people living in deprived areas and highlighted the prevalence of knife crime. It also triggered conversations surrounding the root causes of youth violence and prompted efforts to address the issue, for example, poverty. Peckham saw extreme levels of poverty during the 90s and the 2000s, which of course leads to the formation of gangs as previously stated. Now, Peckham has changed a lot and has undergone gentrification in recent years. And I made a video about that. I mean, if you'd like to go and watch that. Poor education can often lead to limited job prospects and other disadvantages. Black boys not receiving the best education, for example being expelled at a higher rate than everyone else, can impact their ability to get qualifications and can result in them struggling to find a stable job or earn a livable income. This can understandably create feelings of frustration and hopelessness, making them more susceptible to joining gangs as a means of survival or financial gain. Now, before I move on. 
I understand that not all black children are expelled because of racism. I understand that some black children are just naughty and have to be expelled based on how they conduct themselves in school. But when you take into consideration that black children are more likely to be subjected to harsher punishments because society adultifies them and also expels them based on characteristics like their hair texture, it does speak volumes on the system that we're living in. I made a video talking about the racism rooted in the education system and how back in the 70s black children were placed in ESN schools and labelled as being educationally subnormal. I'm not going to go into too much details about it but I did make a video if you guys would like to go and watch that as well. While it's important to note that not all black boys with absent fathers will enter a life of crime, research has shown a correlation between father absence and the risk of a child participating in youth violence. It's very crucial to approach this topic with caution because I don't want to perpetuate any stereotypes nor am I trying to. An absent father can have a significant impact on a child's development. Fathers play a vital role in providing guidance and stability in a child's life, especially a young boy who often uses their father as a blueprint for what it means to be a quote-unquote real man. And without the presence of a father figure in a child's life, that child may struggle to regulate their emotions or form healthy relationships, and this can also make them more vulnerable to seeking a father figure in the form of an older gang member. This one is debatable, but another factor that can influence youth violence is pop culture, specifically music, in particular drill music. Drill music is a subgenre in rap that originated in Chicago in the early 2010s and has since spread to numerous cities around the world, more notably London. Drill music is known for its extreme lyrics and themes of violence and drug use. Whilst it's important to note that not all drill music promotes violence, exposure to certain types of drill music can have a negative impact on younger, more impressionable listeners who don't have the ability to make the distinction between fantasy and reality. Furthermore, drill music often serves as a platform for rival gangs to engage in diss tracks which involves artists from different gangs insulting and violating each other through their lyrics. This can make matters much worse as it increases tensions between rival gangs and can result in real life violence, as members within gangs might feel compelled to defend themselves against disrespect. It's also important to note that there are movies and television shows that also depict themes of drugs, criminal activity and violence, but there's no outrage. In particular, rock and roll also promotes violence, drugs and SEX, but again, no outrage. Some have called for a greater investment in education, job training and other opportunities for young black people from disadvantaged and deprived backgrounds. Others have emphasised the importance of addressing systemic racism as a root cause of gang involvement. Engaging in youth violence during adolescence, which is the most crucial time for brain development, can have long-lasting adverse effects on young black boys. It can hinder their educational prospects, destroy their relationship with family and friends, and can lead to substance abuse or mental health issues. Furthermore, involvement in youth violence can result in incarceration, which further exacerbates the issue. Youth crime places a significant burden on the black community as it can lead to an increase of fear of crime and the constant perpetuation of the cycle of poverty and crime. Building youth centres which promotes a positive environment, offering them vocational training and teaching them applicable life skills. Being able to identify what factors lead to young black boys joining gangs or participating in youth violence and being able to provide appropriate intervention that can help prevent their involvement in criminal activities is a good start. Anyway, beautiful people, thank you so much for listening. I understand that youth violence is a very complex and sensitive topic to discuss. And I also understand that you can't pinpoint one clear cut solution. However, it would be nice to hear other solutions that you may have for youth violence or feel that there are additional factors that I may have missed out on that may contribute to youth violence. But anyway, guys, bye.